Hi everyone, Marie here. In today's video, I'd like to stitch the third part of the Caterpillar Cross Stitch British Isle Stitch Along with you and tell you a bit about the objects on the map we'll be stitching today. I hope you'll enjoy it. First up, I'm stitching on the Crown Jewels. Stored in the Tower of London, these are a collection of 100 extraordinary items, including orbs, scepters and crowns. British Crown Jewels are the most complete collection of royal regalia in the world. They are about to become very important in two weeks time. St. Edward's crown is the chosen crown for the coronation of our King Charles III on Saturday 6th of May 2023. To celebrate this momentous occasion that we've not seen in this country for 70 years, we've released a coronation kit and pattern available on our website www.caterpillarcrossstitch.com. Remember that you get 10% off your first order when you sign up to our newsletter aka VIP Stitch Club, link in the description below. I'll stitch the Red London bus next. This iconic double-decker is certainly one of undisputed symbols of London. It's very much a popular means of getting around for Londoners and tourists alike. It offers some of the best views of this amazing city for a bargain. A single hopper fare costs just £1.75 per hour. London's oldest operating bus route is that of bus number 24, running between Pimlico and Hempstead. It is one of the best sightseeing bus routes in London, taking you to places like Westminster Abbey, Downing Street and Trafalgar Square which is best known for the National Gallery that offers free entry to everyone wanting to see the paintings of the best recognized and admired artists in the world, like Vincent van Gogh, Paul Cezanne, Pablo Picasso, and so many more. If you do take a double-decker to get around in London, try and snatch the highly popular upper deck front seats. You will need a bit of luck to get them, but they are very much worth it, especially when driving through Christmas lit Oxford Street. Let's stitch the London Eye or the Millennium Wheel next. It was opened to the public in the year 2000, and at that time it was the world's tallest Ferris wheel. It's situated on the south bank of the River Thames and surrounded by iconic landmarks like the Big Ben and Westminster Abbey. It offers one of the best views of London and on a clear day, the visitors can see as far as Windsor Castle, 25 miles away. If you combine the views from the London Eye with the Sky Garden in the Shard and the London Cable Car in the Docklands, you'll have pretty much covered the best bird's eyes views of London and surrounding areas. Let's stitch some British fruit. It is a common misconception that Britain doesn't have any traditional fruit apart from fish and chips. There are plenty of national and regional dishes that are quintessentially British, like Sunday roast, Yorkshire pudding, bubble and squeak, shepherd's pie, Welsh cakes, haggis, regional full breakfasts, and the list could go on and on. We'll stitch two of them in this part of the map. First up are scones, a truly traditional baked goods that is loved especially when served with a nice hot cup of tea in the afternoons. Scones are traditionally served with clotted cream and jam. In the US, you can substitute the clotted cream with whipped mascarpone. There are essentially two types of people when it comes to scones. Cream first people and jam first people. The discussion on who's right and who's definitely not can get heated at times. Another iconic British dish we get to stitch on the map is the Cornish pasty. Pastry dough filled with a delicious mixture of beef and roux vegetables baked in a signature shape of a letter D. Since 2011, this dish has been protected under the European Protected Geographical Indication, much like Parmesan cheese or champagne. 
If you want to try some British recipes, the BBC Good Food and Mary Berry's blocks are a great place to start. Let's stitch on the Eden project next. This beautiful and incredible project has gone straight on my to visit list for this summer. It's a complex of huge domes and outdoor gardens on 30 acres of reclaimed china clay pit. There are two huge biomes of rainforest and Mediterranean environment, allowing the plants to thrive in their natural habitats, temperature and moisture levels, as well as outdoor gardens growing plants such as tea, lavender and sunflowers. Environmental education is very much a part of the Eden project. For example, the vast amounts of water needed to water the plants and moisture the air is sanitized rainwater that would otherwise collect at the bottom of the quarry. Last but not least, let's talk about the Lens End, the most westerly point of mainland England. It is a beautiful place to visit with plenty of coastal paths and things to do. It's one end of the very popular route between two inhabited points on both ends of mainland Britain, Land's End in Cornwall and John O'Groats in the northeastern tip of Scotland. The distance is set to be 1000 miles and it's a popular virtual walking mission to undertake. If you walked just 2.74 miles each day, you would walk the whole of 1000 miles in 365 days or one year. And that is it for part three of our Stitch Along. If you wanted to experiment or personalize your own version of the British Isles map, please head over to our Caterpillar Cross Stitch Facebook group. So many people share their own personalizations, like adding a Beatles yellow submarine or colorful beach huts to the design. There's over 16,000 fellow stitchers that you can share your love of stitching with. And that is it from me for this week. Thank you so much for stitching and exploring the beauty and history of the British Isles with me. Until next time.